Okay, so let's get started. Thank you everybody for coming. So I feel a little bit just be thrown on the bus here because uh, I'm trying to do something which I normally not do. Uh, again, sometimes you know, you know, you see this during the presentation, there's also a reason why you have to take risks in life. And that's a little bit false in this category as I got asked to, to present to you guys. I said, well, of course, uh, I'm normally not, again, not doing this. So what I put together is, um, I looked back, and of course, you, like, like a lot of us, we have the shelf of, of management books and all, we have done all this stuff up and down. And I was going back and said, okay, what, from all this, what I have done so far, what was stuck in my mind? And I put this down and I thought, uh, let's throw this out and let's have a discussion with you guys. So again, if I bore you, let me know and I'm shut up and go home. So I am not offended. So, but I wanted to again start differently and I started already with this carrots and macaroni and cheese and breaking all the rules in management. So I learned this, I will see carrots, macaroni and cheese, what is this guy talking about? Well, we'll see, we walk through this and we, will, we'll, we'll, we come back to this one in a second. So now let's start with the first one. What are we covering today? Branding, more than just advertising, a very important point we talk about this. How successful people think, and I will show you a little bit about this, a carrot a day, we come back to this one as well, and breaking all the rules because we have to end up with something which is breaking all the rules. I tell you, I, I just was, with this breaking all the rules, I was in an interview process here uh, with a very high level, and I, I interviewed in a team with a lawyer, and the lawyer went on to go about all this, what the rules and regulations is, and I started out and said, okay, tell me, how would you help us by breaking all the rules? And then the lawyer told me afterwards, how could you ask this question there? And I said, yeah, sometimes you need to break rules in life to achieve this. And we'll come back to this one in a second. So now let's start out. What does this mean to you? Help me. Nike. Nike. Okay. So what is the slogan behind Nike? Just do it. That's exactly right. Just do it. It's Nike. So next one. Macaroni and cheese. Craft. Craft. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. We are having this, our 10-year-old, our as she was about 8 years old or 7 years old, we went to a restaurant. Of course, she was living off macaroni and cheese. So we walked into the restaurant, and then she said, uh, the waitress came and said, I want to have macaroni and cheese. And said, ah! Is this Kraft macaroni and cheese? Because, of course, she only was eating Kraft macaroni and cheese. She doesn't like the other ones. She is completely branded to this specific Kraft macaroni and cheese. Okay, let's move on. What's this? Einstein. Einstein. Absolutely correct. So now let's move on. What is your brand? What are you known for? So if I would put up a picture of you, or a slogan you have said, what is making you who you are? What is your brand? So why is this important? Well, you can say, well, yeah, this is all companies. I showed yeah, Einstein is already different. There, he's a scientist. So, but there's more to branding than just selling a product. These days, everything in life is branding. There's internal branding, there's external branding. Now, of course, we are all working with one brand, all of us in this room, we're working for Oak Ridge National Laboratory. That's already a brand. So if you're going out and if you're screwing up, you're hurting our brand because that's what you're getting aligned with. But then there's a personal branding. And a lot of scientists think, well, well, I'm not in marketing. I don't need to brand myself. That's not important. Absolutely wrong. Your whole life is branding. So I'll give you an example. You're organizing a meeting. Who do you call to be a speaker? You're talking about like Kraft, macaroni and cheese, or an Albert Einstein. You're looking for somebody with a brand. You want to have the top people presented at these meetings. So what does this mean for you guys? You need to develop your brand. People have to know who you are. How do you develop your brand? Of course, in science, you know, you publish in top tier journals. You're going out, you're giving presentations. You're promoting your own brand. So this is, in my opinion, and again, I'm telling you here just my personal opinion through all this hour, it's absolutely, when people say, well, you know, I cannot go into advertising as researchers, again, also wrong. You need to do this because these days, science and advertising is getting you want. It's helping you to brand your name. It's helping you to position yourself to be competitive in the landscape because at the end, like Teresa, a little one, 
craft wants that, that she goes in a store and be buying macaroni and cheese. We want the people inviting you to present Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And we're only achieving this if your brand is top-notch and high up there. So that's external. Now let's talk about internal. As I took this new directorate, I made a lot of rounds and talked to many, many different people. And one thing is very clear, that we're doing a lousy job internally to look across branding of our organizations. So I walk into this one laboratory, and this guy shows me this. With this. this was in building and really interesting stuff. And then he said, well, but we have this one problem. I said, well, do you know who you would talk to? And he looked at me and said, no, I have no idea. Again, it shows me that we don't know what we are all doing. Of course, we have a big organization. It's, yeah, I know it's, it's cumbersome. You go out there and understand what are the brands around it. So you need to create your shopping list and say, what do I need for dinner? A macaroni and cheese and some fruits and some this and some Coke. And yes, you need to develop this, but it's important that we understand who is working around us because you might have a problem. You're trying to find the right person who can help you. You need to identify this brand. So you need to bring these teams together. And we'll come back to this one around the thinking. So, but again, if, if, if you don't have a brand, how do you sell yourself across the laboratory? How should I know, for example, if I'm writing a proposal and I'm looking for somebody who's doing X, some agronomics, for example. So, well, if I don't know that Aaron is in this area, how should I do this? I, I cannot, I don't know who to go to. So it's so important that you really look at this, sit down, and then people do it different, but I think this was this nighttime discussions I have. You sit down with a good glass of wine and think, what is my brand? And go strategically after this. How can I improve my brand? What do I need to do to go to the next level? What can I do that everybody around me buys Kraft macaroni and cheese? Again, as a scientist, I know a lot of us are not thinking down this path. We have to. This is what we need to achieve to have this brand. Again, you need to brand internal versus external. So now talking about this, and this is all why we're here, we talk about branding. Now let's talk a little bit about what can I do to become a better leader. So a couple of interesting sayings here. People may not remember exactly what you did or what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. So I'll give you a couple of examples there. So first thing, as I came here to the US, uh, I had this pleasure to deal with one of these immigration guys. So I walked into, you know, I came, uh, arrived in, I think it was Los Angeles, and they had this one guy in front of me, and he was a complete jerk. I mean, he treated me like a, yeah, really bad. So I don't know anymore what this guy has really done. I just know that I felt really, really bad. So now what does this mean to us? If we work with people and they come to us and we feel arrogant or if we feel that we are superb or we think that, oh my God, look at us, it will stick with these people. This is what's lasting memories. These people walk out of your office and they will never remember what you might have said or what you have done, but they remember how you made them feel. And this is so important a lot of times that something what we, what we are losing, we are all stressed, we are running around, and a lot of times we are losing one of the key major aspects. So I said, okay, how do I make, how do you want to be treated? So how does this guy coming into my office, how is he feeling? So he might be nervous in, in my case because once we come back to this one, a lot of times we have this kind of hierarchical systems here. So a lot of people as I came, they were even afraid to talk to me because they were afraid I will fire them. No, they're not used to this, that you just walk into an ALD right now, or it is some division director, and that you want to know that I would say, look, guys, I have three kids, and you know what? I'm a completely normal man, and you know, even in addition, I still go to the bathroom like you do. Now sit down. I want to understand what you're really doing. So open up a little bit. Treat the people like you want to be treated. That's so important. We sometimes missing this out in our life to be so busy. Also important. Employees don't leave jobs, they leave managers. And a very true saying, because I, I, honestly, why I left at the, at the end of the verse, I was exactly out of this. I just was sick and tired of the management. I couldn't stand it anymore. I loved my job, but I said, that's it, I am out of here. This is what's driving us. So all in our room, this is our responsibility. And again, in management, 
How do you lead? And that's another very important field. So I think you can act and have authority by completely being a buddy-buddy with everybody. So I know that some people might use this to their advantage, but I tell you, my experience is overall, you don't have to step there with this authorian behavior to get authority. You get it in what you do, you get it in your actions, and you're getting how you treat people. So keep this in your memory. This is extremely important. Treat, the, treat people the way you would like to be treated. Look, this is one of the things that I try always to keep in personally for myself very high up there. If somebody screws up, what do you want to do? You want to immediately go and give them disciplinary action and kick him out? Well, there is these cases where you need to do this. That's true. But a lot of times, my belief is that people are trying to do the right things. Everybody makes mistakes. I, I make mistakes every day. So I want to have people around me who point out to me and tell, like, Ken walks into my office, Martin, this is really bad. You shouldn't have done this. That's what I want to hear. Otherwise, I cannot improve myself. So it's important that you're building this relationship to your people around you, upwards and downwards. The key is, I want to be treated in a certain way, so I want to treat all the people coming to me the way I would like to be treated. Very, very key. Now move on. So how successful people think. Show you the first book. This, this is a little tiny book here, but I still enjoying reading. It's from, from John Maxwell, How Successful People Think. So it's pretty, very quick to read, very easy. And he goes through this 11 kind of thinking. And all very, very important, he goes in this little book through all these different levels of thinking. I picked, based on a couple of, of time we have, three which I feel we as a laboratory have to step up and get better in these areas. First one, big picture thinking. Can we talk about this a lot in our management teams? What do we need to do? And we go back to this one, but a lot of times we're using our sponsors to eliminate this. We're just following. We think, oh, the sponsor only wants this. We're losing the big picture. That's so important, and we go through this. Focused thinking, we come back to this one. A lot of times we're getting completely distracted and we're missing out what's really is driving us in life. And shared thinking, very important. I still see tremendous amount of stovepipes in here. We need to change this. Shared thinking is a way to achieve this. So now let's walk a little bit through this. Well, that's also interesting saying, so it's also out of this book. Good thinkers are always in demand. A person who knows how many, how, how may always have a job, but the person who knows why will always be his boss. Pretty interesting. I think a lot of tools into this. <coughs> Good thinkers solve problems. They never lack ideas that can build an organization. And they always have hope for a better future. God, listen, listen to this sentence right now. And look, what, what I have a lot of conversations to me just uh, last week with a student who wrote me and said, well, she listened to one of my presentations and said, well, I really wanted to do biofuels, but now I'm reading in science all the budget cuts going on. So what would you recommend to me? Should I just go and do something different? This is so important. We have to have hope for a better future. And again, looking around us, it's a little bit dire right now. We know budget getting sliced. Look what happened in Japan. Nuclear power stops for another five years. What are we doing with all the global warming? Ben and all the others working in this area. We're running down this cliff. And you're going to this meeting and say, oh my God, why are you just packing home and you're sitting at, at, your, at your porch and, and smoke a cigar and let it, let it be? No, we always have to have hope. Why do we have hope? Because I think the thinking will drive us to us. If we give up, who should do it? It's on us to make an impact. On us in this laboratory, on us in the scientific communi uh, community, it's our job to advance this field. So, jump into this big picture thinking. So. Cultivate big picture thinking. Where success is concerned, people are not measured in inches or pounds or college degrees or family background. They are measured by the size of their thinking. So how do you measure the size of your thinking? Big picture thinkers allows you to lead. You can find many big picture thinkers who aren't leaders, but you will find few leaders who are not big picture thinkers. It's very, very true.